how we can train and how we can boost uh, new skills for new jobs because we need uh, business activity and new economy to survive, of course. Uh, my presentation uh, will be will be two parts: a general view of the facts and needs. Uh, on this and I will give you two examples on the French side, the non French, uh, of uh, training we have implemented to answer all these um, weaknesses and challenges we have uh, seen. The growing, of course, important of sustainable uh, uh, development and the shift of the low uh, carbon economy are increasing the pace of change in the like, market and skill needs. Obvious. Skills development is one of the key to unlocking this job potential. We are looking for activity. The timely supply of relevant and quality skills is indispensable for successful transformation that boosts productivity, employment, growth, and development. This is the general framework, but how we can do it? The transforming throw by greening. We call greening uh, economies affect skills need in three ways, not only new job. Green restructuring, what is it? The greens transform and shift activities in the economy. For example, from those who are less energy efficient and generate higher CO2 emissions toward those that are more efficient and less polluted, of course. New occupation, we have seen the curve for wind energy. We need a new job to, to build this wind activity. And greening, if this is the main target, is to greening existing jobs. A new skill will be needed by workers in many existing occupations and industry in the process of greening existing jobs. I will give you just two figures for friends. One of our statistic organization has launched a lot of survey. We see that we have only 140,000 uh, jobs in new occupation, what we call a green job, but we have to redefine around two, two, uh, three or four million jobs. You see the difference. New job is okay, but really find the other, this is, the, I think, the main target. Um, you have some example of the sector, the industry, the employment effect, the type of restructuring we must do, and uh, the training needs. I just take one more uh, place, but we have time enough. Transport. Of course, we can uh, gain um, employment effect. Taxi could lose their job, but if we retrain this kind of uh, job and skills, we have more uh, in public transportation jobs and so on and so on. Uh, we have electric uh, uh, bus and we mix, and we see, for example, in Strasbourg, we more and more a uh, job in public transportation than in taxi, individual taxi uh, driver, and so on. This is a uh, a narrow example. Uh, changes to skills needs, what are the right? We have three sources of change. Shift between industry, which is the main challenge. Development of new <coughs> occupations and changing skill profile within occupation. And how we can do it, how, uh, how skill needs shift as economy go green, and we have to analyze for a uh, driver of change, physical change in the environment, of course, policies and regulation, technology and innovation, and market for greener products and services and consumer habits. But the difficulty is that all these drivers are interrelated and coordinated. If we go a little bit deeper uh, in, in the four, uh, no, no, just, okay, in the four drivers, of change, physical change. The environment is the basis for policy decision on environmental regulation. The regulation is term can affect or call the development of ability and dissemination of technology. 
regulation and also the availability of technology affect national and global market. See, for everybody, we have changed the feeding tariff in the PV sector. And in fact, in two months, it was broken. The state decided to change the feeding tariff for the PV sector. And now in Germany, I know in, 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 in England it's the same. The, re the regulation framework had a very uh, uh, strong impact on the job and skills needs, of course. If they are not a good strategy or they make what you call a yo-yo, you know, you broke your factor. And, of course, consumer habits and thus the demand for greener products can affect the way companies do, do, do business and encourage them to have new technology and to allow them to meet new consumer needs. And with the label in the, in the primary school, this is important because they are consumer for tomorrow. And you must uh, train them and teach them to how to, to better consume. But in all these global framework, we have a problem with skill shortage. Already both a major barrier to transition to green economies and the creation of green jobs, a trend which is likely to be exacerbated by in the future, of course, because the increase of population. See in Germany, they have lack of engineer, a, a very deep lack. And why this skill shortage for green job? Under uh, underestimated growth for certain uh, green sector, we have not seen the trends, and we have not the good job for the good sector. A general shortage of scientists and engineers, a problem shared by economists, but for all development levels. The low reputation of an attractiveness of some sectors, such as uh, waste management, for example, as you say that it's dirty job, I don't want to do it, I don't want to be skilled. And it's not for me, waste manager. And we have, we have needs, we have shortage. And the general structure of the national skill base. If you see the PISA uh, survey from the EU ECDE, you see that we have a uh, shortage in, in basic skills, mathematics, uh, technology, and science. In France, it's terrible. And I think in the average in, in Europe, we have this kind of problem. And but not the least, the shortage of teachers and trainers in environmental awareness subject and in fast growing green sectors. What we can do? I am belonging to the faculty of law, and I will explain my master's degrees. But my problem is not my student, sometimes it's my colleague. Because they are lawyer, very strong, very good, but very vertical, not continuous. And step by step, I try to. to take them in my boat for open the, the window then, and you see this. How occupation change as economy go green? We have a lot of things to do and I just will show you the skill needs for the low carbon economy. And you see the, the, the need of workforce on this on, on, on this graph and a specialized specialized green skill we don't we don't need a lot. Not too much, but green rate skills, we have a high needs, of course. And how we can uh, answer this kind of, uh, of objectives? What response are proving effective in meeting this current and future demand? Enterprise level response are the faster and most effective in developing skills much current company specific needs. With vocational training. <coughs> the vocational training is one of a, a, a rapid and strong answer. Industry level response through such body as Industry Skill Council, Chamber of Commerce, and Professional uh, Council, of course. At the government level, training program must be delivered through the formal education and training system involving ministries of education manpower or labor and the university and training center related to the system and this is very important and for example i give you again the french side we change in the university our curricula but every five years we submit our curricula to the state every five years 
But we search, we see secure of the economy, internet, the green economy, with a so beautiful uh, expanded curve. If one year is too long, we must adapt our curricula in a shorter term. This is difficult, and it's why we need, we need to have an impact of this government level to, to, to try to be uh, more uh, speed and, and renew our uh, curricula uh, more often. And all public and private partnership matching government resources to business and on knowledge of skills relevance and quality have proven effective in many cases, of course. And it's why we have these uh, pictures, and in any case, investment in skills with matching investment in related job creation is not productive and vice versa. This is why you have to, uh, to understand the labor market, give information, to have an environmental awareness and to have a strategic uh, skill uh, framework for the way. We transition affect the entire uh, training system. The whole training system must be mobilized. The primary, the university, the professional, the in everywhere. How we can do it? And the following key challenge to be met putting basic skills high on the policy agenda, of course, matching classroom and practical training through apprenticeship, internship, job placement, project of the, of the job, adjusting the length and the breadth of training provision, equipping uh, teacher and trainer with update knowledge on relevant issues and on new technology. This is a great um, target for REDS because, as you seen in the beginning, you have for the e, the NR energy project. I can take your materials from your your uh, project to, to show to my my student. And particularly, I have courses on geo thermal approach. I can use the Hungarian example, even uh, in parallel with the Alsatian uh, example. We have a lot of material to share, but we don't do it. And we must put in a EU database all these things, and to give the trainer and the teacher all this opportunity to have several examples and to be open uh, all over Europe with a very good um, support, enabling active labour market policy measure and deploying public employment services, of course, integrated and playing in, in this uh, opportunity. I just, I don't want to, to read you of all these policy checklists, but this is interesting. Take it for batches or for Budapest, and you see it's batching renewal already a uh, strategy in renewables. It's a, a good checklist, you see it, you see, and you, you will see if you answer a little or not to a global strategy matching from the 2020 uh, EU uh, framework. <coughs> And I give you, uh, to finish the first part of my presentation, the short resume of the latest study we have on strategy for green scheme. It's, not, it's a study uh, from the CEDEFOP, it's a European organization on uh, training and skills. And we have the policy message to, to reach the, all this target on green scale. But the cell is not, uh, we cannot uh, download it yet because we'll have it in, in, at the end of April. But you will have for all Europe all the, all the summary of what I've said uh, before. And what we see that the main, the listing of effective skill development for greening the economy is coordination. And it's why I will explain to you in my second talk. Uh, how we have tr we try to make a coordination in my region with all the stakeholders to uh, launch new training and to, to, to launch new possibility for young people to be trained in the university. And if you can you jump, because we have not enough, uh, to the 30, 30 slide. Because this is the French 
uh, framework. If you want to read it, you can do it, but we don't. Okay, I will. Mean, no, no. This, this, this one. Okay. The Bernal 1 and the Bernal 2 is the name of the French framework for renewable energy and sustainable development. I don't want to go deeper inside, but I will give you a concrete example of what we have done following this strategy. And, and both in my university and Coprotec, we have anticipated in the Bernal 2. And these are two uh, best practices we put in the red basket to share. Uh, on the EU level. My university is a, is a big university. Yes, we, it's okay. We represent uh, more than 42,000 students because we have put every university in one. We have, we have three before and now we are, we are only one. And we are, we, are, we, are, we are a general university. But now I'm in France a strong one and very open to foreign students. As you see, we have almost 20% of foreign students. Among these, we have 38 uh, components, and one is the Faculty of Law. Um, I'm a professor in the Faculty of Law, and four years ago, I explained to my colleague that we need to have a master's degree to train new skills for uh, an unified lawyer, and maybe engineer. And we have launched um, a master two degree, it's quite original because it's mixing law, economics and engineer, engineering. And this is the, the master called uh, Management and Law in Renewable Energy and Sustainable Development, supported by its law faculty. And for our French faculty, it's something original, particularly for law. And we are multidisciplinary courses which incorporate legal, economic and technical aspects in the field of energy and sustainable uh, development. But we put inside to follow what you call energy internet. And to prepare this, we put management uh, uh, courses, lecture, and how to use the IT to support energy fields. And we are like this. Two types of courses we'll see uh, after. Uh, how to use collaborative tools, the, the IT to, to search and to have unique, uh, a technical watch. And the other one, we, they learn green, green IT and smart ways. And really, for lawyers, it's difficult, but they do it. And we have uh, put a common base. Um, uh, courses and after we have two options one for corporate social responsibility, another one for uh, sustainable uh, investment and sourcing. It's more public, uh, public tenders and how to build a green public tenders. Okay. Mm -hmm. the keywords, but we go deeper. What kind of, of career we address? After this master, they could be leader in a renewable energy project, leader on a project in corporate social responsibility, sustainable development officer, uh, water management officer, legal advisor to a company, co-public employment, legal advisor to energy regulator. And it's a big master two degrees because it represents 450 hours and we have two semesters, one with teaching uh, is compulsory and the other one is compulsory uh, work placement plus these two options, uh, corporate social responsibility and sustainable investment and sourcing. Okay. I don't give you the full explanation but we have, this is important, a general view of all the renewables, PV, um, um, geothermal, Biomass, hydraulic, microhydraulic, wind, uh, wind, offshore wind, onshore wind, and so on. So they need to have a, a global view on all this topic. After they have uh, IT and, and uh, system with development with smart grid and green IT, they have a lecture on this. This is a big part of the, the master, to be aware on all the topics. After they have international and European legal framework for energy sources, 
We have directly, we have an EU framework, but we have not a single market of energy. They, they, they need to understand this. And we have a full uh, a low framework on this. And after we have the general sector of domestic energy uh, law for France, because we are managed by our, every, every country in the in EU, we have our own um, uh, legal framework. They have this. And after they have economy, and it's an economics uh, from a an school uh, who give this lecture on the uh, carbon market. And after they have to check to two options: this, the first one on corporate social responsibility, uh, to be uh, strong enough to be a, a, to be an officer for a particularly big company, and the other one is option sustainable investment and sourcing. How to manage contractual preliminaries, public tension, and so on. And at the end, they have the, the undercourse of very practical courses uh, with business plan, how to manage a business plan in the energy field, how, how to communicate, how to watch and to uh, integrate all the, the new technology and to follow them in an easy way and to make a collaborative. Management with uh, all the partners. It's really complete master to degree. We have, we try to fit to all these uh, big trends. Uh, we we have to challenge it, and we have a partnership, of course, with the the School of Engineering for EDS and the the Political Science Institute and all the pro the EU project we can open for our student and for our uh, professor, of course. And today, if we try to innovate even in the innovating teaching system with ICT tools, Wiki, TechnoWatch, uh, video conferencing tools, and so on and so on. And we have a blog for the student to follow all this and to, to give feedback on all these topics. This something not uh, common in our French uh, framework because they are very professional and they are very multidisciplinary. And the difficulty we have at the end with for this student, we have uh, around 20 students per year, is to explain on the market why they are so good. <laughs> because they, are, they know the law framework and they are the, as a lawyer able to understand some technical part. And this is very difficult because it's new profile for a lawyer and new profile for engineer. This is my first uh, example. The second one, uh, I just give you something interesting. Uh, to, to answer the, um, the difficulty to mix IT and other sectors, the French government decided to, to, to launch um, what we call a, a referential is a framework to, uh, to certificate some skills. And we have a particular, a particular one a certificate for, uh, for job, for uh, renewable uh, energies, sustainable development and environment. During this certificate, they, they pass a test to be sure they are aware on IT, but the vertical domain uh, is uh, this. They must be able to, to manage um, GIS, to understand what is a uh, database with all the, the renewable energy and so on, and all the, the data, they must manage all the data coming from the environment and the sustainable development. And this kind of certificate, you can pass it after your master's degree, it's common for because it, it's the EU uh, framework. And if you have this, it's like uh, Erasmus or uh, it's like the process of Bologna. You can show this for all the, the country. And this one is uh, oriented uh, sustainable development. We have another one for lawyer and we have another one for the, uh, the health and a dedicated one for the job of engineer. And, my, uh, and to finish, my uh, third example is vocational training. 
Peter, uh, know them very well. It's Comprotec. Comprotec is a, a next, uh, center of excellence, but they they provide a short training, two, three, four days training for craftsmen or an engineer on particularly topic. If you go deeper, uh, go stop. Yes, and they qualify. At the end, they certified the the trainee. Okay. When they follow, for example, renewable energy and sustainable development, solar heating, heat pumps, wood burning, PV power generation, particularly on these uh, four uh, training, they follow these courses. They are able to pass this uh, certification called quality, uh, yeah, it's quality for renewable. It's a stamp. It's very important because after the the craftsmen, these tailor, uh, are well recognized and well known because they have this certificate. And uh, uh, what is he? Uh, the this uh, quality renewable is split on quality uh, solar for solar, quality for PV, quality for wood, and quality pack is heat pump. And in France, we have uh, now. In 2006, uh, 40,000 uh, training with this, and we have certified more than 6,000 installators in PV, in biomass, in uh, in and so on. This is very important because uh, they are now able to say we can provide quality in our work. We follow uh, a strict framework. And we are certified. And even for it's a really added value for this craftsman. And it's completely organized. And CoProtect is an original way of doing this. They have two possibilities. You you can you can be trained in a center uh, CoProtect, or they have equipped 20 cars and bus and they go in the field to train the craftsman. It's very interesting, and like this, they deliver they deliver very uh, closely to the field the, the good uh, skills, and they fit to the day. In the south of France, where it, it needs, they they go, and I think it's a good practice. This uh, car fully equipped to train the craftsman. This is the two example, uh, the two main example I will uh, give you. We have all the degrees and we share what is very interesting because we are uh, Strasbourg, it's a city uh, two kilometers from Germany. We have a full uh, approach, uh, what we call the, pro uh, the Upper Rhine Valley, and we share with the German side our, uh, uh, our trends, our framework of, of training and so on. Like this, we, we can take good practices from the German side and for the French side, and even for the Swiss, because the Basel is integrated in, in our upper right valley. It's very interesting because, like this, it's more fluent, and we have a common uh, work area, because, for example, today in Alsace we have 10% of unemployed people, but in Germany, in Bad Württemberg, close to, to us, they have only uh, 3% of unemployed people. And like this, we must have a, a common view of the cross-border work area. And we need to, to share all these skills with the same approach. It's why the EU framework sometimes uh, we, we fit it, but uh, we have <coughs> very good um, materials to, to share and we have this common uh, approach to be sure that we can employ and can share our uh, skills in, 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 a, in a large uh, space. Thank you. I try to be short enough. If you have any questions, please Thank you. Thank you very much, Catherine.